Film stunts are a unique piece of art. When you say Jackie Chan, Tom Cruise, you know them for their stunt work. Especially nowadays with Tom Cruise, whose stunt work is like fresh air in today's film industry, with all its CGI and generally average writing. Just want to manage expectations. So what if we go back a hundred years to a stuntman who proved its filmmaking was ahead of its time? Well, that's a little too far. Who made better received pictures a hundred years earlier and proved an influence never to be matched again. I'm talking about... Recently, I've been really intrigued by Buster Keaton and how you can still see his legacy a hundred years later. But to understand that legacy, we must start on October 4th, 1895 in Pika, Kansas, where a young boy named Joseph Frank, but not really Joseph Frank, Keaton was born. And the reason I say not really is because... Wow, my 18 month son fell down the stairs without a single injury. Really? Yes. Gee whiz, he's a regular buster. Hmm, buster. I like that. Now he's called Buster Keaton. Because he was born into a theatrical family, he quickly started to perform on stage. In one play, he even goaded his father, which caused daddy to, you know, literally throw him off stage. So his parents got arrested for potential child abuse, as Buster was left with no broken bones. That gave him the name, the little boy who can't be damaged. And to be honest, he really couldn't. Being thrown off stage by your parents, he said it was part of the job. Surviving World War I whilst catching an ear infection? No problem. Going just partially to school whilst pursuing acting? Did he even notice? And so, that was his early life. Off to... Buster is now in New York, where he met this beautiful man, who said to him, Hey, can you jump into a picture named The Butcher Boy? Sure, great, thanks for the service. Yeah, but when I'm done, I'm gonna ask you if I can borrow a camera, to which you will say yes. I will take it back to my hotel room, where I will analyze and repair it the next morning in order to better understand film. Then you will hire me for 14 of your article short films, in which I will even smile and laugh, despite my future nickname, and we will be close friends for good. Which is exactly what happened. Now, if you want to know how those 14 short films went, then listen carefully, because they actually went... Good. It even delivered Buster his own production unit, Buster Keaton Productions, which gave him full independent freedom to make his picture. And make his picture, he did. He hired some writers, but realized he did it better himself. Soon enough, he'd write his stunts into the scripts. And in no time, he's breaking his neck in the tank scene in Sherlock Jr. Or sees a wall fall on top of him in Steamboat Bill Jr. Talking about do or die. But his most recognized work to date Probably is a general, a 75 minute long comedy set in the American Civil War. It was not well received at first, but would later become one of the most recognized pictures in cinema history, without spoken dialogue nor real camera movement. And of course, stunts, more stunts, about to die, no safety wires, Buster was at the peak of his career. But then... America was entering the 1930s, the Great Depression had struck, film was transitioning from silent right, to sound, I'll finish the blue parrot. and Buster's independence was taken away by its distributor, United Artists. After the filming of one of his many iconic train scenes had turned into an expensive nightmare. Although he later signed a new deal with MGM, Buster disliked his time at the studio. Keaton even noted that MGM only wanted Keaton the star, and not Keaton the creator. Buster wanted to prove that he indeed can't be damaged. He started to look for room to be creative again. Which he got. Well, a small room. He produced parlor, bathroom and bath and proved to be an extraordinary success. Met with this nightclub comedian and made three successful films together. Buster was finally back onto... Well, never mind. By 1932, Keaton's personality really started to change. Hating studio conditions and a deteriorating relationship with his wife he started to drink and frequently failed to turn up on set, which would cost MGM $3,000 per day. And on February 2nd, 1933, he was fired. His best days are now really behind him. 
After receiving the sack and some pretty drinking, he began to work on some independent films in France and England, then some educational pictures, filming more comedies at Columbia Pictures, returning to MGM as a gag writer, and even working with the up-and-coming television. He even revived the silent film in the 1950s. Head and ups that stomach and an empty lot. Eventually, Buster would go on and make films and television appearances until his death on February 1st, 1966, where he died in Woodland Hills, Los Angeles, due to lung cancer. He was 70 years old. A man who had broken every bone in his body, his stunts, his comedy, his way of visual storytelling, his technical filmmaking, left a huge mark on cinema. Patterns of his inventions can still be seen today. He can be seen on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, he's not related, he's left some memorable quotes, and peacefully rests in the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Los Angeles. Whilst we will see more Tom Cruise effort in 2025, the little boy who can't be damaged already did it a hundred years earlier.